The Gobi Desert is a large desert region in Asia. It covers parts of northern and northwestern China, and of southern Mongolia. The desert basins of the Gobi are bounded by the Altai Mountains and the grasslands and steppes of Mongolia on the north, by the Taklamakan Desert to the west, by the Hexi Corridor and Tibetan Plateau to the southwest, and by the North China Plain to the southeast. The Gobi is notable in history as part of the Great Mongol Empire, and is the location of several important cities along the Silk Road. The Gobi is a rain shadow desert, formed by the Tibetan Plateau blocking precipitation from the Indian Ocean reaching the Gobi Territory. Geography the Gobi measures over 1,600 kilometers (1,000 miles) from southwest to northeast and 800 kilometers (500 miles) from north to south. The desert is widest in the west, along the line joining the Lake Basin and the Lop Nor (87 degrees to 89 degrees east). It occupies an arc of land 1,295,000 square kilometers (500,000 square miles) in area as of 2007. It is the fifth largest desert in the world and Asia's second largest. Much of the Gobi is not sandy but has exposed bare rock. In its broadest definition, the Gobi includes the long stretch of desert extending from the foot of the Pamirs 77 degrees east to the Greater Kingan Mountains, 116 degrees to 118 degrees east, on the border of Manchuria, and from the foothills of the Altai, Sion, and Yablanoi mountain ranges on the north to the Kunlun, Altan Ta, and Kilian mountain ranges, which form the northern edges of the Tibetan Plateau. On the south, a relatively large area on the east side of the Greater Kingan Range, between the upper waters of the Songhua and the upper waters of the Liao Ho, is reckoned to belong to the Gobi by conventional usage. Some geographers and ecologists prefer to regard the western area of the Gobi region as defined above, the basin of the Tarim in Xinjiang and the desert basin of Lop Nor and Hami Kumul, as forming a separate and independent desert, called the Taklamakan Desert. Archaeologists and paleontologists have done excavations in the Nemect Basin in the northwestern part of the Gobi Desert in Mongolia, which is noted for its fossil treasures, including early mammals, dinosaur eggs, and prehistoric stone implements, some 100,000 years old. Topic: <laughs> Climate. Topic: The Gobi is a cold desert with frost and occasionally snow occurring on its dunes. Besides being quite far north, it is also located on a plateau roughly 910 to 1520 meters (2990 to 4990 feet) above sea level, which contributes to its low temperatures. An average of approximately 194 millimeters (7.6 in) of rain falls annually in the Gobi. Additional moisture reaches parts of the Gobi in winter as snow is blown by the wind from the Siberian steppes. These winds may cause the Gobi to reach minus 40 degrees Celsius, minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, in winter to 45 degrees Celsius, 113 degrees Fahrenheit, in summer. The climate of the Gobi is one of great extremes, combined with rapid changes of temperature of as much as 35 degrees Celsius, 63 degrees Fahrenheit. These can occur not only seasonally but within 24 hours. In southern Mongolia, the temperature has been recorded as low as minus 32.8 degrees Celsius minus 27.0 degrees Fahrenheit. In contrast, in Alksa, Inner Mongolia, it rises as high as 37 degrees Celsius 99 degrees Fahrenheit in July. Average winter minimums are a frigid minus 21 degrees Celsius minus 6 degrees Fahrenheit, while summertime maximums are a warm 27 degrees Celsius 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Most of the precipitation falls during the summer, although the southeast monsoons reach the southeast parts of the Gobi. The area throughout this region is generally characterized by extreme dryness, especially during the winter, when the Siberian anticyclone is at its strongest. The southern and central parts of the Gobi Desert have variable plant growth due to this monsoon activity. The more northern areas of the Gobi are very cold and dry, making it unable to support much plant growth. This cold and dry weather is attributed to Siberian Mongolian high pressure cells. Hence, the icy sandstorms and snowstorms of spring and early summer plus early January winter. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Conservation, ecology, and economy. Topic: 
The Gobi Desert is the source of many important fossil finds, including the first dinosaur eggs. Despite the harsh conditions, these deserts and the surrounding regions sustain many animals, including black-tailed gazelles, marbled polecats, wild Bactrian camels, Mongolian wild ass and sand plovers. They are occasionally visited by snow leopards, brown bears, and wolves. Lizards are especially well adapted to the climate of the Gobi Desert, with approximately 30 species distributed across its southern Mongolian border. The most common vegetation in the Gobi Desert are shrubs adapted to drought. These shrubs included gray sparrows saltwort Salsola passerina, gray sagebrush, and low grasses such as needle grass and bridal grass. Due to livestock grazing, the amount of shrubs in the desert has decreased. Several large nature reserves have been established in the Gobi, including Gobi Gervanzayakan National Park, Great Gobi A and Great Gobi B strictly protected area. The area is vulnerable to trampling by livestock and off-road vehicles effects from human intervention are greater in the eastern Gobi Desert, where rainfall is heavier and may sustain livestock. In Mongolia, grasslands have been degraded by goats, which are raised by nomadic herders as source of Kashmir wool. Large copper deposits are being mined by Rio Tinto Group. The mine was and remains controversial. There was significant opposition in Mongolia's parliament to the terms under which the mine will proceed, and some are calling for the terms to be renegotiated. Specifically, the contention revolves primarily around the question of whether negotiations were fair Rio Tinto is far better resourced and whether Rio Tinto will pay adequate taxes on the revenues it derives from the mine an agreement was reached whereby the operation will be exempt from windfall tax. <laughs> Desertification The Gobi Desert is expanding at an alarming rate, in a process known as desertification. The expansion is particularly rapid on the southern edge into China, which has seen 3,600 square kilometers 1,390 square miles of grassland overtaken every year by the Gobi Desert. Dust storms, which used to occur regularly in China, have increased in frequency in the past 20 years, mainly due to desertification. They have caused further damage to China's agriculture economy. The northern and eastern boundaries between desert and grassland are constantly changing. This is mostly due to the climate conditions before the growing season, which influence the rate of evapotranspiration and subsequent plant growth. The expansion of the Gobi is attributed mostly to human activities, notably deforestation, overgrazing, and depletion of water resources. China has tried various plans to slow the expansion of the desert, which have met with some small degree of success, but no major effects. The most recent project is called the Three North Shelter Forest Program, huge strips of newly planted forests. The government hopes the forests will help stabilize the soil, retain moisture, and act as a buffer against further desertification. <laughs> Ecoregions the Gobi, broadly defined, can be divided into five distinct dry ecoregions, based on variations in climate and topography. Eastern Gobi Desert Steppe, the easternmost of the Gobi ecoregions, covering an area of 281,800 square kilometers (108,804 square miles). It extends from the Inner Mongolian Plateau in China northward into Mongolia. It includes the Yin Mountains and many low-lying areas with salt pans and small ponds. It is bounded by the Mongolian Manchurian grassland to the north, the Yellow River Plain to the southeast, and the Alishan Plateau Semi-Desert to the southeast and east. Alishan Plateau Semi-Desert, lies west and southwest of the eastern Gobi Desert Steppe. It consists of the desert basins and low mountains lying between the Gobi Altai Range on the north, the Helen Mountains to the southeast, and the Kilian Mountains and northeastern portion of the Tibetan Plateau on the southwest. Gobi Lakes Valley Desert Steppe, ecoregion lies north of Alishan Plateau Semi Desert, between the Gobi Altai Range to the south and the Kongai Mountains to the north. Zungarian Basin Semi Desert, includes the desert basin lying between the Altai Mountains on the north and the Tian Shan Range on the south. It includes the northern portion of China's Xinjiang province and extends into the southeastern corner of Mongolia. The Alishan Plateau semi-desert lies to the east, and the Emin Valley steppe to the west, on the China-Kazakhstan border. 
Tian Shan Range, separates the Dzungarian Basin semi-desert from the Taklamakan Desert, which is a low, sandy desert basin surrounded by the high mountain ranges of the Tibetan Plateau to the south and the Pamirs to the west. The Taklamakan Desert ecoregion includes the Desert of Lop. Eastern Gobi Desert Steppe the surface is extremely diversified, although there are no great differences in vertical elevation. Between Ulaanbaatar 48 degrees 00 and 107 degrees 00 e and the small lake of Iron de Basu Nor 43 degrees 45 and 111 degrees 50 e, the surface is greatly eroded. Broad flat depressions and basins are separated by groups of flat-topped mountains of relatively low elevation 150 to 180 meters 490 to 590 feet, through which archaic rocks crop out as crags and isolated rugged masses. The floors of the depressions lie mostly between 900 to 1,000 meters 3,000 to 3,300 feet above sea level. Farther south, between Iron Dutiasu Nor and the Yellow River, comes a region of broad tablelands alternating with flat plains, the latter ranging at altitudes of 1,000 to 1,100 meters and the former at 1,070 to 1,200 meters 3,510 to 3,940 feet. The slopes of the plateaus are more or less steep, and are sometimes penetrated by bays of the lowlands. As the border range of the Hyangan is approached, the country steadily rises up to 1,370 meters (4,490 feet) and then to 1,630 meters (5,350 feet). Here, small lakes frequently fill the depressions, though the water in them is generally salt or brackish. Both here and for 320 kilometers (199 miles) south of Ulaanbaatar, streams are frequent and grass grows more or less abundantly. Through all the central parts, until the bordering mountains are reached, trees and shrubs are utterly absent. Clay and sand are the predominant formations, the watercourses, especially in the north, being frequently excavated 2 to 3 meters 6 feet 7 in to 9 feet 10 in deep. In many places in the flat, dry valleys or depressions farther south, beds of lowest, 5 to 6 meters 16 to 20 feet thick, are exposed. West of the route from Ulaanbaatar to Kalgan, the country presents approximately the same general features, except that the mountains are not so irregularly scattered in groups but have more strongly defined strikes, mostly east to west, west northwest to east southeast, and west southwest to east northeast. The altitudes are higher, those of the lowlands ranging from 1,000 to 1,700 meters 3,300 to 5,600 feet, and those of the ranges from 200 to 500 meters 660 to 1,640 feet higher, though in a few cases they reach altitudes of 2,400 meters 7,900 feet. The elevations do not form continuous chains, but make up a congeries of short ridges and groups rising from a common base and intersected by a labyrinth of ravines, gullies, glens and basins. But the tablelands, built up of the horizontal red deposits of the Han Gai which are characteristic of the southern parts of eastern Mongolia, are absent here or occur only in one locality, near the Shara Muran River. They are greatly intersected by gullies or dry watercourses. Water is scarce, with no streams, no lakes, no wells, and precipitation falls seldom. The prevailing winds blow from the west and northwest, and the pall of dust overhangs the country as in the Taklamakan and the desert of Lop. Characteristic of the flora are wild garlic, calidium grassal, wormwood, saxol, nitraria shobiri, caragana, ephedra, saltwort and the grass laciagrostis splendens. The Tana wild onion Allium polyrhizum is the main browse eaten by many herd animals, and Mongolians claim that this is essential to produce the correct, slightly hazelnut-like flavor of camel arig fermented milk. This great desert country of Gobi is crossed by several trade routes, some of which have been in use for thousands of years. Among the most important are those from Kalgan at the Great Wall to Ulaanbaatar 960 kilometers 597 miles from Jukan in Gansu to Hami 670 kilometers 416 miles from Hami to Beijing 2000 kilometers 1243 miles from Hohat to Hami and Barkal and from Lanzhou in Gansu to Hami Topic <laughs> Alishan Plateau semi desert 
The southwestern portion of the Gobi, known also as the Shi Tao and the Little Gobi, fills the space between the Great North Loop of the Yellow River on the east, the Ejin River on the west, and the Kilian Mountains and narrow rocky chain of Longshou, 3,200 to 3,500 meters (10,500 to 11,500 feet) in altitude, on the southwest. The Ordos Desert, which covers the northeastern portion of the Ordos Plateau, in the Great North Loop of the Yellow River, is part of this ecoregion. It belongs to the middle basin of the three Great Depressions into which Patanin divides the Gobi as a whole. Topographically, says Nikolai Przewalski, it is a perfectly level plain, which in all probability once formed the bed of a huge lake or inland sea. He concludes this based on the level area of the region as a whole, the hard Salgine clay and the sand strewn surface, and, lastly, the salt lakes which occupy its lowest parts. For hundreds of kilometers, nothing can be seen but bare sands, in some places they continue so far without a break that the Mongols call them Tengar i.e. sky. These vast expanses are absolutely waterless, nor do any oases relieve the unbroken stretches of yellow sand, which alternate with equally vast areas of saline clay or, nearer the foot of the mountains, with barren shingle. Although on the whole a level country with a general altitude of 1,000 to 1,500 meters 3, to 4, feet, this section, like most other parts of the Gobi, is crowned by a checkered network of hills and broken ranges going up 300 meters higher. The vegetation is confined to a few varieties of bushes and a dozen kinds of grasses and herbs, the most conspicuous being Saxol and Agriophyllum gobicum. The others include prickly convolvulus, field wormwood, Artemisia campestris, acacia, Inula amophila, Sephora flavescens, convolvulus amani, Peganum and astragalus species, but all dwarfed, deformed, and starved. The fauna consists of little but antelope, wolf, fox, hare, hedgehog, marten, numerous lizards, and a few birds, e.g. The sand grouse, lark, stonechat, sparrow, crane, Henderson's ground jay, Podosis hendersoni, horned lark, Aramophila alpestris, and crested lark, Gallerida cristata. Topic: <laughs> Zungarian Basin semi-desert. Topic: The structure here is that of the mighty T, i.e. Shan, or heavenly mountains, running from west to east. It divides the northern one-third of Singkang from the southern two-thirds. On the northern side, rivers formed from the snow and glaciers of the high mountains break through barren foothill ranges and flow out into an immense, hollow plain. Here the rivers begin to straggle and fan out, and form great marshes with dense reed beds. Westerners call this terrain the Zungarian Desert. The Chinese also call it a desert, but the Mongols call it a Gobi that is, a land of thin herbage, more suitable for camels than for cows, but capable also, if herds are kept small and moved frequently, of sustaining horses, sheep, and goats. The herbage comprises a high proportion of woody, fragrant plants. Gobi mutton is the most aromatic in the world. The Yulduz Valley or Valley of the Haidag Gol 43 degrees north 83 degrees east to 43 degrees north 86 degrees east is a mini desert enclosed by two prominent members of the Shanashan Trayan Ash mountain range, namely the Chukas and the Krasinard Pine Rallies, running perpendicular and far from one another. As they proceed south, they transcend and transpose, sweeping back on east and west respectively, with Lake Basin in between. These two ranges mark the northern and the southern edges respectively of a great swelling, which extends eastward for nearly 20 degrees of longitude. On its northern side, the Chul Ta descends steeply, and its foot is fringed by a string of deep depressions, ranging from Lukshan 130 meters 427 feet below sea level to Hami 850 meters 2,789 feet above sea level. To the south of the Karuk Ta lie the desert of Lop Nur, the Kum Ta Desert, and the valley of the Bulunzir Gol. To this great swelling, which arches up between the two border ranges of the Chul Ta and Karuk Ta, the Mongols give the name of Gashun Gobi or Salt Desert. It is some 130 to 160 kilometers 81 to 99 miles across from north to south, and is traversed by a number of minor parallel ranges, ridges and chains of hills. Down its middle runs a broad stony valley, 40 to 80 kilometers, 25 to 50 miles wide, at an elevation of 900 to 1,370 meters, 2,950 to 4,490 feet. 
The Chul Ta, which reaches an average altitude of 1,800 meters (5,900 feet), is absolutely sterile, and its northern foot rests upon a narrow belt of barren sand, which leads down to the depressions mentioned above. The Karuk Ta is the greatly disintegrated, denuded, and wasted relic of a mountain range which used to be of incomparably greater magnitude. In the west, between Lake Basin and the Tarim, it consists of two, possibly of three, principal ranges, which, although broken in continuity, run generally parallel to one another, and embrace between them numerous minor chains of heights. These minor ranges, together with the principal ranges, divide the region into a series of long, narrow valleys, mostly parallel to one another and to the enclosing mountain chains, which descend like terraced steps, on the one side towards the depression of Lukchen and on the other towards the desert of Lop. In many cases these latitudinal valleys are barred transversely by ridges or spurs, generally elevations en masse of the bottom of the valley. Where such elevations exist, there is generally found, on the east side of the transverse ridge, a cauldron-shaped depression, which some time or other has been the bottom of a former lake, but is now nearly a dry salt basin. The surface configuration is in fact markedly similar to that which occurs in the inter-mount latitudinal valleys of the Kunlun Mountains. The hydrography of the Gashian Gobi and the Karuk Ta is determined by these checkered arrangements of the latitudinal valleys. Most of the principal streams, instead of flowing straight down these valleys, cross them diagonally and only turn west after they have cut their way through one or more of the transverse barrier ranges. To the highest range on the Great Swelling Grumger Zamilo gives the name of Tuj Tau, its altitude being 2,700 meters 8 feet above the level of the sea and some 1,200 meters 3 feet above the crown of the swelling itself. This range he considers to belong to the Cholta system, whereas Sven Hedin would assign it to the Karuk Ta. This last, which is pretty certainly identical with the range of Karatikan Ula also known as the Kizil Sangir, Sanir, and Singer Mountains, that overlooks the southern shore of the Lake Basin, though parted from it by the drift sand desert of Ak Belkum White Pass Sands, has at first a west-northwest to east-southeast strike, but it gradually curves round like a scimitar towards the east-northeast and at the same time gradually decreases in elevation. In 91 degrees east, while the principal range of the Karuk Ta system wheels to the east northeast, four of its subsidiary ranges terminate, or rather die away somewhat suddenly, on the brink of a long narrow depression in which Sven Hedin sees a northeast bay of the former Great Central Asian Lake of Lop Nor, having over against them the echelon terminals of similar subordinate ranges of the Pei Shan Boy San system. See below. The Karuk Ta is throughout a relatively low, but almost completely barren range, being entirely destitute of animal life, save for hares, antelopes and wild camels, which frequent its few small, widely scattered oases. The vegetation, which is confined to these same relatively favored spots, is of the scantiest and is mainly confined to bushes of saxol haloxylon, anabasis, reeds kamish, tamarisks, poplars, and ephedra. History Topic. Topic. European exploration until 1911 Topic. The Gobi had a long history of human habitation, mostly by nomadic peoples. By the early 20th century, the region was under the nominal control of Manchu China, and inhabited mostly by Mongols, Uyghurs, and Kazakhs. The Gobi Desert as a whole was known only very imperfectly to outsiders, and information was confined to observations by individual travelers from their respective itineraries across the desert. Among the European explorers who contributed to early 20th century understanding of the Gobi, the most important were the following Jean-François Gerbelon Eberhard Isbrand Ides Lorenz Lang, 1727 to 1728 and 1736. Thus and Alexander G. von Bunge, 1830 to 1831. Hermann Fritzsche, 1868 to 1873. Pavlinov and Z. L. Matusovsky, 1870. Ney Elias, 1872 to 1873. Nikolai Przewalski 1870 to 1872 and 1876 to 1877. Zosnowski 1875. Mikhail V Pevsov 1878. 
Grigory Patanin 1877 and 1884 to 1886 Count Bela and Lajos Lochi 1879 to 1880 the brothers G. E. Grum Gershomilo, 1889 to 1890, and Grum Gershomilo, Pyotr Kuzmich Kozlov, 1893 to 1894 and 1899 to 1900, Sevalid the First Roborovsky, 1894, Vladimir Obruchev, 1894 to 1896, Karl Joseph Futterer and Dr. Holderer, 1896. Charles Etienne Bonin 1896 and 1899 Sven Hedin 1897 and 1901 K Bogdanovich 1898 Ladyfin 1899 to 1900 and Katznikov 1899 to 1900 Count Jacques Bouly de Lestain and Martha Maley 1902 Topic See also Topic Asian dust Geography of Mongolia Geography of China Green Wall of China Legendary Mongolian death worm Olgoi Korkoi, said to inhabit the Gobi in Mongolia List of deserts by area Topic Notes Topic Topic. References Topic. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Gobi. Encyclopædia Britannica. 12 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. p. 165. Owen Lattimore, 1973. Return to China's Northern Frontier. The Geographical Journal, Volume 139, Number 2, June 1973, pp. 233 to 242. Topic. Further reading. Topic. Topic. External links. Topic. Map from. China the Beautiful. Flickr, photos tagged with Gobi.